Okay, let's get the indicator on the part here. See how bad we are. Okay, I'm going to run the indicator up with a little more preload. It's just not on there too much. Now, I zeroed it there, but when you indicate something in here, if you try to, if you get it to run true out here and it's running out a whole bunch here with these hard jaws and you really tighten these jaws down, you're not going to be able to move the part out here. And that's the reason I've, I've only grabbed onto a very little amount of the part, maybe an inch and a quarter here, maybe a little more. Let's just see. Inch and a half. Because if I, I have it way back in here, I may not be able to move it to get it to run straight. And this is kind of a rough piece of material. So let's see what, what I've got going out here. So what I typically do, see that's, that's falling off the indicator, the needle's going this way. So I'll, I wanna hammer this up a little bit if I can. If, if I don't have the, I need to make sure I have the jaws snug enough so it's not gonna move, you know, not gonna, yeah, they're pretty snug. Let's see if I can hit this up closer to zero, okay? I'm, I'm hitting on the bottom because I normally would hit on the top, but the camera's in the way here for my swing, so I can't really do it. I don't like to hammer into an indicator, if I can help it. So I'm going to zero that back out, but you can see as I jog this down how rough the, the this, this has a lot of rough turning on it, but I'm just going to get it sort of um, just going to get it sort of close in this direction first and then I'm going to rotate it to the next jaw I'm not worried about run out yet I'm just uh, I just want to see if I've if I've got the part so that it's straight this way and this way in the jaws because when I start to tighten down those those jaws, I won't be able to move it out here with the hammer. So this has to come up a little bit too. Here. Yeah, I'm hitting it pretty hard right now, and it's 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 moving, but it's not it's not moving real easy. Okay, so now I've got that pretty close. Now I can start to indicate my run out. If I tried to do this, if I tried to do that before, I, I got it relatively straight this way, I would never be able to move it. When I start these hard jaws, when I really start to tighten these jaws, See, this has got to come up a little bit. I'm gonna try to run this wrench from the bottom because it's right in the way of the camera here. Trying to not hit the camera. Okay, so I'm going to re-zero that. We're going to jog that around 180. Not going to worry about those other two jaws at the moment. This is there's a heat treat spot in the part here. That's the reason that's they ground into it wherever they heat treated it. So that's not too bad on those two jaws. Now this one has to come down. I'm, I'm going to rotate it around 180 though because I can't get the wrench. The camera's in the way, and I'll, I'll hit the wrench on the camera. I'm trying to tighten from the bottom here, in this case. See if I can loosen a little bit up here without hitting the camera too much. I'm going to loosen it too much because I don't want the part to move from its own weight in the jaws there. Bring it back approximately up to zero here. I don't know how round this stock is either. Okay. That may be about as good as this is going to get, as rough as this material is. Let's see how we are lengthwise now. 
See, we we stayed pretty straight. I don't know where the spot to indicate on here is, but it's up a little bit. I don't know if I could move this even. I can still move it because I haven't got the jaws as tight as I'm, I can go, but. But if I hadn't if I hadn't sort of straightened that out to begin with, I would have never been able to move it enough out here. See that has to come up a little bit. Let's see if I can do it, even move it. See, I'm. This is a a four pound uh, dead blow hammer. And uh, I can hardly move it at all. Although it's not, that's probably good enough for what I'm doing here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten the jaws up more, but I'm going to run it out here. I'm going to move you around so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm going to just tighten the jaws up all kind of evenly. I'm gonna check the run out down here. This is a you know a very rough piece of material. And I'm taking probably an eighth of an inch off the OD, so this isn't that critical really, but so it should be running reasonably true down here. But let's say that's the low spot. Let's let's just see if I can even move this by hitting it with the hammer down here. See, I can't even move it. I'm hitting that pretty much as hard as I can. I'm gonna make sure these jaws are real tight. Move this out of the way a little bit so I can. Uh... Okay, so that's that's pretty much good enough, I think, for this. So now all I got to do is set my Z zero on here which I could either do with by putting the tool in there and facing it and setting it zero or with my uh, hammer gauge. Here's the turning operation. I just manually faced this off. I didn't put in the program to actually face the part on either end, so I just did it manually here until it cleaned up on the end of this stock and set my Z zero with this tool. This is number Tool number 1B on my tool changer, which is set to do an OD turning on this machine. You can, of course, index the tools and run many different offsets on this kind of a machine on the same tool, depending on the angle of your V-axis. There's my zero point, and I had to bring it the next tool in the program which wasn't in the changer yet which was this allied spade drill or they call it an APX drill actually you can uh, either have a, the tip of this drill either a spade tip in the middle or their gen 3 carbide tip but the spade tip actually works quite nicely because the surface footage is generally slow in the middle of a drill and then as you go out in bigger diameter then the carbide inserts work better so this kind of drill actually works quite nicely I've drilled all different kinds of materials with it and with that spade tip well I use a cobalt spade tip in the middle it, it works really nice I gotta touch this boring bar off I just drilled a little start hole with that drill manually and then I could just touch the bar off in Z and then bore a diameter in the shallow hole and set the offset for that bar. 
Now we're going to come in and do the real turning operation here. To rough turn the and finish turn the OD down. This is just trying to duplicate the the raw material stock size that I've already have sitting on the pallets over here for this uh, super duplex part. I'm going to use this as a setup piece because the material is so expensive. I don't want to waste the material with a mistake of some sort. So here's the drill. It's a two and a sixteenth diameter drill. Kind of looks funny here because of, I think the shutter of the camera must be in sync with the speed of the drill. So drill halfway through, a little more than halfway through, and then the boring tool. We're boring down in steps, half of the depth it's going, and then another half because it tends to pack up shavings at the end of the bore, and and this lets the coolant flush the shavings out a little better than just going all the way in one pass. I think that's the finish cut there. Going down the bore, halfway down. So that's what it looks like halfway through the material. The only reason I didn't go all the way through is first I didn't have my long boring bars yet. I posted a post on Instagram showing those bars the other day. And the drill wouldn't drill all the way through either. So here's cutting the extra material off the end of the blank. I just found this drop in the shop that happened to be the right size. It's a piece of steel. I think it's a, I don't know if it's 4130 or 4140, some piece of drop off the end of a bar they had. So we cut it off in the cutoff saw. It was about three inches longer than I needed. I'm going to flip the jaws around the same as uh, I'm going to use for the actual setup of the part here. I want to have the use the shoulder on these jaws to push the stock up against when I do the actual parts. That's the reason I want them that way. And it also gives me a little more clearance on the chuck because the jaws will be they won't be hanging out. When I get down at the end of the part, turn on the OD. So you can use the lines on, I kind of eyeball the keys on the jaws with the lines in the face of the chuck, the circles. And you can get it close so you don't have it running out too much when you try to indicate the part in for the first time. Put this in and hammer it up against the face of the chuck, jaws. And then indicate it in. And like I said, I'm just trying to duplicate the raw material here so it's not super critical, really. I may not even take this much care indicating the real parts, really, because there's quite a bit of material coming off of the ID and the OD, and, it, and it, if it ran out a little bit, it wouldn't really matter that much. I just skim the face here and see how much I got to take off or to, how much I'm going to set my Z0 in. So I set the zero here and then I get the calipers and measure the length of it. And I'm going for 13 and 3 quarters of an inch. So it was almost 14 inches long. So I got to take almost a quarter of an inch off the face. So I set my Z0 in. So I can see where I'm going, and I just I just manually face this off on this one because, like I said, I didn't have it in the program to face the the stock, and I also wanted to just run the same program that I ran for the other end of the part, except without the turning of the OD. So that's what I was shooting for, the 13 and 3 quarters as you see there. That's That seems like the, the length of the longest piece of stock. I'm going to drill the hole to meet the other hole. I didn't show all of that in the, in the video because it's the same thing. So that's the, the blank ready to go and chucked 
ready for the first operation in the machine. Just deeper this so I don't accidentally cut myself on this sharp edge here. So thanks for watching it and please subscribe and uh, Merry Christmas to everyone if I don't get another video out before um, Christmas. <laughs>